for our first episode of the show, I wanted to start at the beginning with a recreation of one of my very first brews I ever made, and one that's very heavy on the malt elements of making beer. So for our first ingredient, we wanted to focus on the malt. I also happen to know it's to be the beer of choice for my brew assistant today. Trevor Gemma, come get a beer. You do not have to tell me twice. Hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. You're uh, gonna be helping me brew today. Sweet. I've heard <laughs> you've dabbled in the art of brewing. Yeah, very little. I wanted to bring you on for our first episode because A, stout's your favorite type of beer. Yeah. Number two, historically speaking, malt-heavy beers are a nice highlight on the first ingredient of beer. And number three, my brewing journey, learning to brew, was with stouts, oh. primarily, because they tend to be a lot more forgiving than trying to balance some oh, of are the more. They? Yeah. I, did, I would just, for some reason, I would assume that they'd be harder. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, no, there's a... There's almost no hops, uh, especially in the in the recipe that we're dealing with today, which kind of yeah. That's, <laughs> I know they're like, essential, oh, but I, yeah. yeah, when they're when it's totally forward, it's like it's not my thing. Yeah, but it's the bitter. I like dry hop stuff. Malt heavy beers are among some of the oldest traditions in the world. Oh, because if you leave agricultural leftovers out in the sun and the heat and stuff breaks down and they ferment and you drink stuff that has alcohol in it, you get to have uh, a lot of fun. Yeah. I brought an example of a stout that I'd like to try to recreate. I was up in the Okanagan recently and uh, stopped by the cannery brewing. I was pleasantly surprised with, well, not surprised, a lot of their beer is great, but uh, I particularly liked the Darkling Oatmeal Stout. Yeah. I'd like to try to recreate certain elements of this beer while adding my own personal creative flair to cool. it. So. Right uh, let me pour you a glass. Here. Oh, thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Oh, nice color. What was your first stout? My first stout involves a secret ingredient that I will be showing you once we get onto the brewery set. Like that you drank or that you... Oh, my first stout that I drank. Yeah. No, I used to be a Guinness girl. Yeah, I started with Guinness as well. That's like even-ish. Yeah. Let's give that a shot. Uh, wow, prost. that is dense. Prost. Prost. Oh. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm. mm-hmm. Malty, malty, toasty, toasty. Okay, yeah, you're right. That's a very good stove. Yeah. Whoa, that's pungent. Yeah. <laughs> it's a flavorful so, beer. Oh, I think God. what turns a lot of people off of stout is they they are quite heavy. They're a mouthful. Oh, yeah. uh, it's the beer that drinks like a meal is what I always say. Yeah, so one of the reasons I used to be a Guinness gal was because it's like, okay, cool. I can spend $7 on a pint of Guinness, and that's my dinner, and it helps put me yeah. to sleep. So yeah. <laughs> that's great. Totally. Um, I also brought a stout. Brilliant. What kind yes. of stout did you bring me? Uh, well, I also happen to have brought an oatmeal stout, the Townsite Brewing Perfect Storm Oatmeal Stout. Oh, beautiful. Yeah. Uh, Perfect Storm sounds about 2020. <laughs> yeah. Uh. All right, I'm looking forward to this. <laughs> uh, yeah, so, and this is a Canadian Brewing Townsite. Awards Gold medal winner of 2016. Giggity, giggity, yeah. goo. And they're on the Sunshine Coast somewhere, town site? That's a good question. Seashell? Uh, bip, 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 bip. Sunshine Coast? Wow, you nailed that. Power River? I nailed it. What's the percentage on this? I think it's a six. Beauty. Ooh, bip, 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 bip. Um, no, it's five, five. Same five, as that. Five? This has uh, like Ooh. a bit thinner of a head than, than you normally see in a stout, but I'm, I'm getting like. It smells like almost a little bit metallic. This would probably be yeah. super nice on a nitro pour. I'm definitely catching some sort of like nut smell. That sounded weird. Uh, <laughs> 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 you know, like nuts. You know, the kind you eat. Um, it is nutty. It tastes great. Yeah, yeah. it's good. Very different than what we had uh, uh, out of cannery. Smell this one again. Now that it's been sitting and opening up, mm. it totally smells like coffee. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Like, it smells like cold brew. You ever had stout for breakfast? Uh, right now. <laughs> <laughs> it is before noon. You ever have really bitter dark chocolate? I love it. Yeah, I tend to like dark chocolate a lot. And this is leaving like, not a, the taste of chocolate, yeah, but the residue. aftertaste, yeah. Mm -hmm. So I've actually made a really conscious decision to write myself away from that bitter coffee, dark okay. chocolate kind of taste and play up a little bit of the citrus fruit notes. Okay, And cool. that's all based on what our secret ingredient is. Secret ingredient? It's a secret ingredient. Oh, it's a secret. Mm. But yeah, still maintaining that, that sweetness, that ode to the stout. I guess we'll see how it, this one's how quite it pans sweet. out. 
Yeah, and I want to keep that velvety, heavy mouthfeel Mm. because, (laughs) you know, in uh, ancient uh, times, they would actually, it was so thick, the beer that they were making, that they would serve it in a bevel rim bowl. It was almost like porridge, had the consistency of porridge, and you would drink it with a straw. Of all the beer styles I've researched, this has just like such a fascinating backstory, mm. which we'll get into once I show you the the malt profile we're going to be working with today. You ready? Sweet. Yeah, I'm good. Yeah, that's, I mean, well, I'm let's hold on. It. There are some pretty cool reasons why two-row barley is most commonly used in beer production. First of all, two-row has more predictable sugar and enzyme action than six-row barley. And secondly, its protective husk provides a natural filter when combined with hot water after the malting and milling process. Rice in Asia and corn in the Andes were used in beer production in the ancient world and continue to be commonly used ingredients today, along with wheat, rye, and even buckwheat. They're roasted in kilns to various levels of toastiness, depending on the base or adjunct malt types desired. All right. Beautiful. So we've got our malts. Malt is just grain that's been germinated or toasted. Um, I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. As you can see, there's various levels of toastiness. So our Munich Dark uh, is one of the malts we'll be using today. This is the Munich Dark in the middle. Oh, that? Oh, okay. So give that a whiff. Oh. And then the Maris Otter, the Munich Dark That's is really from, guess where? Germany. Germany, yeah. yes. And then this is the Maris Otter. So the Maris Otter is an English malt that's from the taking ocean. up the... <laughs> Otters? No? Way off? All right. Wait, is it safe to eat this? I already put it in my mouth. Well, that tastes like cereal. We'll die together. Well, that's just it. These are cereal grains. They produce the, oh. that's like the basic carbohydrate, right? Mm. Carbohydrates made up of sugars. We want to break those sugars down into fermentable mm. stuff for our yeast to drink. So Mare's Otter is a very common base for a mm. stout. But uh, for our accent malts, we have, like I said, the Munich Dark. We have our mm. Caramel Vienna, which, uh, caramel. as you can see in color, it's been a little bit toasty to bring out those caramel elements in the grain. I don't know why I'm eating this. I'm just- Because I'm eating it. Monkey see, monkey do. <laughs> and then for our beautiful, that's actually really sweet. Oh, well, it's not caramel though. It tastes, did you say vanilla at all? No, oh. but do you get vanilla? I'm getting vanilla out of there. I get like rich this... spice and like kettle corn. Kettle corn, yeah, yeah. totally kettle Which corn. is caramel popcorn, by the way. It's true. Yeah, that's beautiful. This um, looks like tiny coffee. It does, doesn't it? Yeah. And it, it kind of has that smell. We're not using a whole lot of this. This is more for color and that characteristic stout. Holy shit. That velvety tastes, methyl, yeah. That tastes like chocolate, like cacao. Are you gonna pull a cherry? Yes. I should do more eating of the grain when I, when I write these recipes. But like mm. I said, the majority of what we're working with today is gonna be these Maris Otter grains. So we've got uh, six pounds of this. Wow. Yeah. So for a five, pounds? no. We've got oh. several of these. Oh. <laughs> okay. So for a five and a half gallon batch, we're using six pounds of Maris Otter, four pounds mm. of our Munich Dark, two pounds of Caramel Vienna, and because it is a stout, a pound of flaked oats. Just for that right. velvety mouth feel, that sort of rich, bready stuff that we, we do want a little bit of an element of. So as you can see, these are still in their, their raw form. So this is straight from the plant. They've been germinated, they've been malted. We got to break them down a little further before we stick them in our machines oh, so okay. that those for the sugar extraction to, to come like on out. Um... I'll go get the grain mill. Uh, you want to pass me an apron? Let's, uh, let's suit sure. up. Sure. Mm-hmm. Mechanical breakdown of the grain with our super dope grain mill. Cool. Yes, yes. So. This is a one hold and crank at the other pour, I guess. Yeah, so I got your handle right here. Maybe Ooh. what I'll get you to start with. If you want to pour, I'll just sit here, hold and crank. Okay. Yeah. There's a little knob here. Is this adjusted correctly? Yeah. We oh. tend to keep this on the coarser setting. We really just want to put like one tiny little crack in, in each of these little shells, okay. uh, just enough so that its sugary goodness on the inside can come out when we stick it in water. Yeah, yeah? Yeah, let's do it. Let's get cranking. All right. And it doesn't matter what order we go in because it's all getting blended. I was going to ask that. Oh, geez. oh, yeah. Here, I can help hold. Oh, no. I got it. Yeah? Yep. These don't come uh, automated? They do, but it's on a finer setting than what we need. Besides, ah. this is this is like you're far more connected because you're putting more hard work into it, right? Sure. Yeah, it's like <laughs> good old-fashioned farm work. Mmm. Smells good. Oh, 
Vamos a ver. Ya. Oh! Beautiful. And that's the last of our grain. Thank okay. you so much. You can go home now. Beauteous. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Mm. And then you can see just how that's been broken up a little bit so uh, that we can... So the husks just sort of separate and stay whole. Yeah, just we put a little crack in them and, uh, and like then they corn. yield our, our fermentable sugars. Sweet. This looks and smells great. It does. We're ready to mash in. Sweet. Let's do it. Ooh. Just dump it in? Yep. All right. Lovely. That's everything. Beautiful. Cool. We'll fill this back up all the way to the top. Oh, this? Ah. Yee yee. Bucket down. <laughs> oh. oh. Ow. <laughs> Our equipment is super boss in that it has, it's a rims system, which just means that it blows consistent hot water over the grain bed so that we get okay. maximum extraction of our sugars and it means we don't have to sparge, which is nice. We need to fill more water in there? Yeah. Seem, oh, okay. uh, we want about an inch or two above the uh, grain bed. Oh, okay. And stand by, going for pump. Nice. So that's uh, swirling. It's swirling. You can go ahead and put the lid on. Okay. And we need to set a timer for. Oh an wow, hour. that already. Uh, already, it's starting to. So the color's my, coming out. You can see even <laughs> it's going darker by the second. So yeah. hopefully by the time we come back and our timer is over, uh, this will be a, that characteristic stout color. Yeah. Cool. So we need to set a timer for 60 minutes and let it do its thing. We just have to monitor the temperature. Oh, okay. Make sure it doesn't get too hot or too cold. So what do we do for the next hour? Nothing? We can finish those uh, beers we brought. Sweet. Oh, let's go. All right. So stout is a style of beer that was first mentioned in the late 1600s. It became hugely popular in Europe from then and was beloved for its fortifying and nourishing qualities. This, of course, referring to the malty hardiness of the beer style. Also, it probably helped that stout takes longer to spoil and is enjoyable at higher temperatures, unlike most other beer styles. So while the pump's going, yeah. I'll clue you into what we'll be doing in the boil kettle, which is our next step. Boil kettle is where you add your hop additions, of mm -hmm. course, as a bittering and flavoring agent. And in, Is that all the hops we're using for this? This is all the hops we're using for this. Wow. So stout is a very malt-heavy beer. Yeah. Less so on the hops. Yeah. Um, so we have two different types of hops that we're using. This is more just A, what I had on deck, and, and B, I'm used to playing with like hop profiles in a beer to yeah. as like my oh, to, like, weapon for flavor. It. So yeah, yeah. the malt thing is, is a new thing for me. So oh. it felt weird to use all one kind of hop. So I've got uh, mm, uh, some Kent Golding hops. Mm. That smells like... Um... Smells like pot. I don't know what that smells like. Hops are actually a member of the cannabinoid family, mm -hmm. so they are actually related to the marijuana plant. I would love to be the like paid to be a person who comes up with names for hops, but these are fuggles. It smells like a horse barn. <laughs> In a good way. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it just reminds me of that. It smells um, like hay. Yeah, yeah. This one does not. A little bit. <laughs> A little bit more earthy. And now... Yeah, I see a, a, a something there that's just a bunch of tea bags. You ready for our secret ingredient? Yeah, that's that's what's going in here. Can you tell what kind of tea bags these are? Yes, that's Earl Grey. That is Earl Grey. Yes. So tea and beer is a very tricky ingredient. So not a mm. lot of... I think it's something that's kind of untapped, mm. but becoming tapped. When do we add that? So I'd like to wait for the proteins to break down for the alpha and beta oils in the hops to kind of do what they're supposed to do, hopefully, if we do everything right. And then just at the last minute, in the last oh. few minutes of flame out in the boil kettle. Oh, okay. Uh, and then I, depending on how things are going, I, I may add a little bit more in secondary. So this is a... Experiment? It's gonna be an experiment. Woo! Yeah. All right, so now we take the stuff, now that that has dinged, transfer our warts to our boil kettle, Okay. Uh, the false bottom in this is going to filter out all of those grains, so hopefully there isn't any sediment left behind. And then we got to boil this for an hour just to help clarify, stop all that enzyme action, get all those proteins to break up into smaller molecules so mm. that when we add the yeast, the yeast can... Nom, 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 nom. Brilliant. So let's shut this down and get the pump going and we'll, we'll bottom fill our doodle do here. What, am I, what, what lever am I pulling? Pull, Pull the, the lever! Drunk! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yeah. Oh, baby. 
See, now it's got that color. Uh, one more thing we want to do before we get started. Mm. If I could get you to put on these heat gloves. Glove it up. I feel like they're not designed with like a left, right properly. <laughs> so it, it feels weird. There's no like natural bend. You look great, honey. Uh -huh. um, so this will be very, very sweet if we taste it. But stuff's gonna happen to the sugars while we're in here. I'm not gonna taste it yet. Don't do it yet. It's got to cool even before we put our hydrometer in it. So sticking this in a little bowl of water in the in the keg freezer uh, will be a good way to do that. And then um, okay. what this helps do is just help track our fermentation levels. Yeah. So if we do this pre-boil, see what we what we were at before we boiled, and then we take a, another one post-boil when the wort is chilled. And um, as the yeast go through and they munch those sugars, what this basically does is measure the density of the wort. So in here, this is like a matrix of a whole lot of molecules that we've boiled out of our grains. Those molecules are gonna change in the boil kettle and they will change as fermentation occurs and as the yeast eat more and more and more, the sugar levels will go down, yeah. down, down. So this is measuring sugar essentially? Essentially, but what that tells us is how much alcohol is being produced. That'll boil for about an hour. Okay. So I'll go ahead and set my timer. When do we add the hops? We add the hops at 40 minutes. So I'll set my second digital timer here for 20 minutes. So we wait 20 minutes and then they're in there for 40 minutes? Yeah. Oh, okay, cool. Yep, and um, what the boiling does, it helps like sterilize, it, it impacts the clarity, the color, breaks up some of those bigger proteins into smaller pieces, some of the mm -hmm. bigger carbohydrates into smaller pieces so that our yeast can digest them. Mm. There's a whole bunch of other very complicated elements involving Isometrizing alpha and beta acids, but we, you know, what? we'll, we'll, we'll no, simmer that down. No, for, drink beer. Yeah. Simple. The whole point of the boil is to make it digestible <laughs> for yeast and human alike. So, oh. boil good. Boil make clear, boil make tasty. <laughs> Simple. Simple. Mm. Yeah. That's, yeah. uh, <laughs> phew. Boil good, add pop, um, add yeast. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And, and then, then at five minutes, we'll add our tea bags. Okay. Brilliant. Cool. So maybe what I'll get you to do, Handy Dandy Helperton, right underneath the Fuggles hops, we have a hop bag. And what this does is just because pellet hops tend to have lots of little pieces that can clog up our equipment, we put them in the hop bag, okay. stop some of those doodle doos, and oh my God, Burris, get yourself a hop bag because it makes cleanup so much easier. Hop bag. Hop bag, woo! Beautiful. Okay. So that will be all ready. Yeah. I'm gonna start the whirlpool just to prevent us from getting any hot spots, which is when stuff uh, starts to caramelize, oh, floats yeah. to the surface. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, we want it to be nice and uniform. Yeah. Ah, Jesus. Oh. Okay, oh. yep, nope, it's time. There's a handy dandy hook in here. Oh. So you can just hook that string along here. Okay, that's easy. Lovely. <laughs> it's like making tea, but then. Yeah, but with hops. Making more tea and then you boil more. All right. It's a lot of waiting. 35 minutes and 18 seconds. Cool. Mm, beer? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Hey, Trevor, is that hydrometer glass uh, room temperature, you reckon? Uh, yeah, sounds about right. How's it smelling? Oh, you want to smell it? Yeah, I do. Woo! Bum, 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 bum. Dun, dun, dun. And since this is an experimental brew, I have my master notebook for taking our pre Boil gravity reading. Mm. All right, now this little beauty is gonna tell us how much fermentable sugar we've extracted. You wanna plop that in there, but like twist drop it, give it a little spin. Oh, I don't need to sanitize it because this isn't going back in That's the not going back in the work. Okay. Give it a spin. Oh. 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 So we're, we're a little bit at the upper end of what we want, but um, I feel like since stout is fairly forgiving, um, that's our timer for adding these tea bags. Right. Ooh, ooh. Yeah. Ooh. These steep for another five minutes before we chill the wort. Ideally, you have done this before it's time to chill your wort. Using star sand, sanitize our carboy here. We're gonna be fermenting in here, so gotta make sure there's no germies that are gonna interfere. There we go. That's a uh, different color than it was previously. It's more brown than, you it's know what? Because I'm holding it in a shaft of sunlight. That's why. 
Uh, and it's just bubbly. See, now it's dark. <laughs> 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 Shaft of sunlight. Beautiful. So our wort is chilled. Yeah. It's been aerated, sort of, oh. kind of. We have our pre and post boil gravity samples. Uh, so I'll take a reading later, and I'll, I'll I'll let you let you know how it turns out. Last step is just to add our yeast. Yeast. And then we plug it and leave it for about two weeks. So for this recipe, we're using the White Labs Irish Ale yeast, of course, since common stout yeast. Basically anything that is brewed at this, uh, in the temperatures that we are, unless we're lagering it, which is basically fermenting at really cold temperatures, mm -hmm. it's gonna be an ale yeast. So um, there should be a sanitized funnel in yonder I sanitized water. Yeah, yeah, I see it. Plonk that in there. Plonk. I always like to say some kind words to my yeasty babies. Oh, yeasty babies. I feel like a third wheel. You can, nope, it's been sanitized, so you can't actually touch it. So. Oh, my hands just went into the thing. You can cut the nib. Okay. It's old! Go, yeasty babies! Earn your cape. Go forth and, and love and uh, breed and snack and... A little chunky. Make your little poopsies. You can smell that, eh? A little bread doughy. All right. The yeast has been pinched! Why is it called pitching? Because you pitch it on in there. <laughs> I didn't play t-ball. So this is a three-piece rubber bung. Mm, rubber bung. A rubber bung. Right. Uh, so if you want to stick that little Murphy in there. Ooh, don't mind if I I'll do. I'll find the lid. Look. Put that there. How's it going up there? Uh, how deep do I get the bung? <laughs> I have pushed one. <laughs> <laughs> I have pushed one all the way through, so you know what? I think where you're at is probably fine, and we can okay. make minor adjustments so as as along the way. Popping back up. Just give it a little, a little wingle, wingle, and even in the next few minutes, uh, you'll actually start to see it start bubbling. And then I'll add a little bit more old girl flavor, and probably about four ounces of dextrose, just to give that yeast mm. a little, a little pop. And we'll put it in secondary to carbonate. Cool. And then I'll bring this to you on uh, on filthy talk. You can give it a try. We done it. Sweet. Sani 5. Oh, that was a good one. Uh, make sure you like, subscribe, ring the bell for updates, uh, following me as I learn how to do this stuff, mm -hmm. uh, and make more delicious and interesting beer. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs>